But I also want to talk to you guys a little bit as well as we go through this, just to get some thoughts and we can throw ideas back and forth. Um, because it's really important to me that we keep this conversational and you can ask questions that you need to throughout the presentation. So uh, creating course level outcomes is what we're going to talk about today. Um, for those of you that I haven't met, my name is Christy Reese. I am the Academic Assessment Chair, Committee Chair, I should say. Um, and I am also the Chair of the DMS program here at Triton. So um, those are my two big roles. Um, my focus today, again, is course level outcomes. And with that being said, I'm unsure how I did this in the corner, but I can't get rid of it <laughs> in the presentation. Um, so sometimes I impress myself. But um, it's always important when we're talking about learning outcomes to at least talk about the ones that hopefully as you leave me today, you walk away, for, walk away with. So identify the key characteristics of quality learning outcomes, select appropriate action verbs using Bloom's taxonomy. So we're going to go over that in, in detail today. And then develop high quality course level outcomes. So we're going to just kind of look at the end at connecting with curriculum and, and developing some very, very concrete course level outcomes as we go through today. All right, so why am I talking about this, right? Curriculum probably should. Well, when it comes to assessment, um, you have to have quality learning outcomes to be able to assess, otherwise we wouldn't know what we're assessing. So this semester and this academic year, we're placing a heavy focus on really solidifying our process revolving around the course level. Um, so creating a sustainable process of course level evaluation, revising our course level outcomes for consistency across campus with the ultimate goal always of improving our student learning. So um, for those of you that haven't been a part of the process over the past several years, we've really worked hard at solidifying our outcomes at the general education level, at the program level, and now we've made it to course. So um, again, with a focus on just making things clearer and more consistent across campus um, in our evaluation. Anybody in here doing course level evaluation? Good. We should. Course level evaluation? Or are we really sticking with program level mainly? Program level. Program level? Yeah. 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 So course level. Course level. To a degree. But we did match them. So yeah. indirectly. Mm -hmm. Indirectly, yeah. yes. So we're doing it. We just want to be able to more routinely document um, in a systematic way how we're doing it. And really define what are our course level outcomes. You know, and on our curriculum currently, we have our overall statement, we have our topical outcomes, but nothing's numbered, nothing's clear. And for those of you that look at those topical outcomes, I know some of mine have 15, some have 36. And evaluating those routinely can be challenging. So we really want to clarify and make it a little bit easier. All right, so levels of student learning. Again, when we talk about outcomes, we have really those umbrella general education outcomes. So the five that we have here on campus, every program has its own specific learning outcomes, every course, and then every lesson and every time that we meet with a student or every topic we cover, we also have outcomes for that. So everything kind of nests in and should, in theory, map or tie together in a nice web, which in the background is what we're trying to do and accomplish. A, a clear connection between what we're doing in, a, in the classroom, at a program level, at the, um, and as an institution as a whole. So this is just, again, the levels. We're really going to focus today on course level specifically and creating those outcomes. So. I felt it was important because there is some terminology confusion sometimes when we talk about objectives, when we talk about outcomes, just to clarify what, what do we mean? What's the difference? Because there is a, a distinguishable difference between the two. So when we talk about objectives, it's what will we teach? Today, we're going to learn about this. For today, um, we're going to investigate that, right? So those types of um, statements are actually objectives and if they're not necessarily measurable, but they are beneficial and helpful in instruction and in letting the student know what the plan is. Usually they're instructor centered though. 
to really focus on what we're going to do. What are our objectives, right? The outcomes is what will the student do as a result of our engagement, as a result of the learning experience, what can they do when they leave us, right? Or as a result. These are observable, measurable, student-centered, and not task-focused, right? When we think about objectives, usually those are more task-centered. So again, just to kind of get you thinking and, and looking at the terminology and how it's broke down. So guiding questions as we start looking at developing any outcome, whether it be um, at a program level or at a course level, should be what do we want the student to learn? You know, as a result of today's activities, as a result of the entire course, as a result of the program, again, I'll keep it focused on course today, what do we want them to learn? What do we want them to be able to do as a result? And are there measurable and observable ways for that to happen? And that's the key when it comes to making an outcome. We have to make sure we can see it happen and we can have that observation and measure it. Um, so to document it. So I, I have looked at a lot of different resources, but I really like that University of Wisconsin on their learning outcome page had what they called SMART course learning outcomes. And it's just an acronym for five key relevant things that should exist when we do do our high quality course learning outcomes. Specific, so they should be very targeted. They should be very, very specific to what we want to accomplish or what we want students to accomplish more so. They should be measurable. So to say something's happening, we have to be able to measure that ability. Achievable, relevant to current practice, to current industry, to current real life evaluation, and time sensitive. I really love time sensitive because sometimes we have the greatest ideas, but they're just not really realistic for our small, short time that we have with students, right? Now, we can build, if we have courses that build on one another in a program, we can start building those types of outcomes for our students at the higher level. Um, but these are really the five key characteristics of high quality course learning outcomes. They should touch upon all of these different areas. So let's start with an action verb. Um, we've all heard of Bloom's taxonomy. We're gonna go through it. Usually when we look at course level outcomes, they should only have one. However, when you're trying to umbrella and package in one to six, sometimes you might have, you know, identify and describe, right? So it is okay for that to happen. Um, you really have to look at the course level that students are at, what you're expecting out of the course and out of that interaction, the level of mastery. Because it's okay if they can't develop something in an entry level course. That might be something better suited for a higher level. Um, sometimes we are just teaching a little bit lower level understanding um, instead of that higher level, those higher level skills, which I'll go over taxonomy in just a second. Students will be able to. It's an assumed sentence, it's an assumed phrase. That's why we always start with our verb for when we do these, um, these course level outcomes. So here is our beautiful uh, Bloom's taxonomy. You can see it in a pyramid. You can see it in an upside down pyramid. You can see it this way as well. Um, it really is the key foundation for our outcomes because these are the verbs or at least um, a way of us evaluating the level of mastery and looking at the verbs as we create the outcomes. So when we look here, in purple, remember is our recognize and recalling. That is the basis and the foundation for everything else. Before you can understand, you have to remember the facts, right? The basic details. And then you can understand what do those facts mean? What do those details mean? Um, moving up to our apply, great. Now I understand what the facts and details mean. Now I can apply them to other concepts, other ideas, other situations. Analyzing, so breaking it down, right? Looking deeper into the material, into the content, um, and really starting to tear it apart, 
if you will. Evaluating, so judging the value of information, what's important, um, breaking it down again at a, a little bit smaller level, and then creating. So combining any of the parts that we've learned and making something our own or making something brand new. So again, you have to look at the level of, of learning or mastery that you're expecting from the course as you start to create these. So when you start with your outcomes, if remembering's okay, again, I just gave six examples of words that relate to each of these categories. So when we remember, we recall, we select, we define. We've usually had that definition, right, to define that. We describe it, identify it, or label it. So those, again, are just some samples of what you could use in basic level fact information, right? So remembering. The next one is, after I remember all of those facts and I recall and I can identify, then it's time to show that you fully understand. So things like summarizing, classifying, associating, predicting, explaining, paraphrasing. So showing in your own way, or in the student's own way, obviously, that they not only retained that fact, but they understand the fact as well. So, you know, basic level, I'm gonna recall the five steps in a process. Now, I'm gonna show that I understand the five steps in that process by explaining them to you, okay? All right, next level. So, applying. Calculate is the easiest one for me to associate, but I'll just go through my list. Calculate, examine, solve, select, organize, and produce. Okay, so produce, we do think a lot of it with our highest level of creating, but there all are also ways that just in applying, you can um, produce as well. The easiest way to think about this is we learn math equations, mm -hmm. right? And then we calculate them and we apply them. So that is the easiest way for me to kind of apply that one in this situation. Analyze. So after that, we can move on to identifying, differentiating, categorizing, combining, discriminating, illustrating. So really, breaking down the material, breaking down the facts, breaking down what we understand, and reorganizing it or chunking it, if you will, into different um, patterns. So that would be our analyzing. And then the final one, evaluate. Okay. So when we evaluate, we defend, we compare, we assess, we support, and this isn't our final one. <laughs> we conclude and we critique. Okay, so we can analyze a situation, right? And we can look at it and apply all of our knowledge, and then we can evaluate it further. We can critique, for example, um, students create images in our classroom, and then I have other students critique. The ability for them to take that knowledge base that they have of the material we've covered and critique others' work or their own work. Now we're finally at the final one for real. So create, compose, develop, formulate, assemble, design, cultivate. So they are taking all of their knowledge and building something new. They're not taking old works. They're not taking somebody else's work. Um, you know, developing a, a plan for a robotics project, for example. Creating something new from all of the experiences and interactions that they've had along the way. Okay, I have my students create protocols of their own based on all of our conversations and their experiences throughout clinical they have to formulate their own protocol or appropriate complete imaging protocol. So that would be an example. So those are our five levels. And as we go through, I'm sorry, those are all our levels. As we go through, we have to pick the right one. Let me go back. That applies to us. I keep saying five levels and it's six. Um, but we have to pick the right one that we expect, and it's okay to not get to create 
right? We do want to have higher level thinking and critical thinking in the classroom, but sometimes it's not course appropriate. Or um, maybe it is, and, and it's you're the next level of the building block, and you're going to have more analyzing and evaluating than you do remembering. And that's what the map is going to come into play. Yes. And this will be part of our mapping, yes. All right, so this is all related to just kind of looking at where do we fall on the spectrum and picking the appropriate verb to associate with where what we expect of our students. And everybody is different, and nobody can tell uh, anybody how to assign these things. Uh, you are all the area experts, right? And, and this is why it's so important that everybody is involved in creating these. After we pick the verbs, it, the next thing that should come is a clear, concise statement of the student's knowledge or abilities. So we want them to evaluate X, Y, Z. It should be very clear, very concise, short, and to the point um, to not muddy the waters, if you will. So I just pulled some sample, um, what were considered high quality student learning outcomes um, off of Drexel EDU website because I thought they were really good at just showing exactly what we mean. Develop an individual learning plan for a child with a learning disability, period. Okay. Produce a strategic plan for a small manufacturing business. The nice thing about these is that they are they have the verb, but they're also very clear and concise. Right? They're not vague to where develop a strategic plan for what, right? So they're specific enough, but also leave ability for instructors to have their own choice in how they do this in the classroom, okay? Um, analyze a character's motivation and portray that character before an audience. Again, giving the option, differentiate among five major approaches of literary, uh, literary analysis, and then list the major ethical issues one must consider when planning a human subject study. So again, these are just examples. I'm, I'm going to give this PDF to everybody um, that I haven't already, <laughs> so that you can just see some examples of, of some clear um, course learning outcomes. All right. So we're not going to get started yet, don't worry. Um, when it comes to this, there's a few key steps that I think are important that everybody should really consider. The first would be connecting with your current curriculum. We have curriculum already, and I'm going to show you some key places to look for how to develop these. Um, and the current outcomes, evaluate them. Are they relevant to what you're currently doing, or do we need to do some revision? Because I can tell you I'm doing this right along with all the assessment fellows because I am an assessment fellow as well as the chair. And I've seen things where I'm like, huh, yeah, that's we need to change that. that that's not relevant to what we're currently doing. Um, it's old practice or maybe we've added something new and now I, I realize I need to revitalize things. So take the time to do that. That's The best time is when you're already there. Collaborate with fellow faculty. Well, there's nothing better than those that teach the same thing as you giving their opinion, going back and forth. What do you think is important? What do you think is relevant um, to, to this course in online environment and face-to-face -face environment? Sometimes they can be a little different. Um, what, what do we value as faculty that, that provide this educational experience? And then develop the new course outcomes. So take the time to really dive in, evaluate what we're doing, think about what's happening in the classroom, collaborate with those around you, you know, fellow faculty um, and chairs for sure, and then start developing your work. So just an example, this is my own, it is not great, but it's a good example of, of breaking it down. So upon, this is the current overall learning outcome as on our curriculum. Upon successful completion of this course, the student will be able to understand the physical principles utilized in various imaging modalities in healthcare today, types of energy and their utilization, conversions of units of measure, formula calculations, and various weight types. 
when I read that, I'm like, my goodness, I'm not course level assessing this mm -hmm. because what am I assessing? Understanding of everything? Um, it, it's very nonspecific. So the key thing that stood out to me, I put on the next slide, was that understand that's really the only verb in there. And I apply it to six other things. Um, so there's no real adjustment or anything that I can measure about that statement. So after looking at that, I went to this. This is topical outcomes for that course. I think I might have chopped off one section, but nonetheless, if you look at it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and this is a one credit hour course. So, and I think I chopped off a portion. How am I going to reasonably every three years, which is hopefully going to be our final cycle that we come up with, evaluate all 14 things reasonably, right? That, that's not a realistic expectation um, every you know, year to do three, four, five, six, just to get it done um, in, a, in a quality way. So what I did was I took that original statement, realized that certain things maybe weren't worded correctly, um, weren't relevant to what was the key things that I wanted students to get out of this course, and I came up with this, four. Upon successful completion of this course, the students will be able to, so that's our assumed statement, CLO one, explain basic physics quantities. When I say that, I'm gonna go back here, that covers my entire top row, entire top area. I can pick, do I want to evaluate based on you know, work, do I want to evaluate based on power, what unit within there am I going to use, or can I use multiple sharp? It's going to really be up to um, instructor discretion, but it's clear. The next person that comes after me can see CLO1 is, where before it was not clearly defined. CLO2, perform physics calculations and conversions. That happens in every single column on my topical outcome. I don't have to do all of them. I can pick again which section, which area. I could pick all of them should I choose um, to reference. CLO3, describe my, how physical principles are used in various imaging modalities today, which again, covers an entire section here on the bottom. I don't even think this is showing up, but the bottom covers all of those. So again, I, I, can, I can pick how I'm gonna use those specific topical areas of instruction to assess. And then CLO4, identify the fundamental characteristics of electromagnetic and mechanical waves. Far more specific for me as someone who's going to be doing assessment, far more specific for a student that comes in, I can't say they, they're not going to, probably not going to look through all those topicals as much as I would love them to, and I do put it in my syllabus. Mm -hmm. But if they can see this, all right, these are the key things that I need to make sure I get out of this course. So your topicals aren't going to change. Mm -hmm. It's just that sentence. It's yeah. It's actual CLOs. Yep. So these will remain. Okay. We're not touching. We're not changing unless you find that while you're evaluating, you need to which yeah. can happen, and it did happen for me personally. I even found ways that after you know diving in, maybe the hours that I associated with certain things weren't really what I was doing yeah. anymore. So yeah. they needed adjustment, right, to, to really represent what truly was happening. Um, and yeah, to, to clarify, because the statement, although it's a nice umbrella, isn't clear. And for those that are doing course level assessment, how do we pick what's one, two, three, four, or 20, right? We don't, we just assign random numbers and we don't want that happening because um, we want to be consistent. And Chris, can I ask a quick yeah. question uh, similar to what Gretchen was talking about? So I can still uh, keep up every single course learning objective. For example, for the purpose of when I even teach a face-to-face -face class, I still have my like learning modules in mm -hmm. Blackboard set up, and under each learning modules module, I have like a few. So right. I was thinking, okay, now when we narrow it down to four, do I have to get rid of all of that, or can I just keep all of that because it's still relevant? 
where would these appear? Would these only appear in, in like the course outline? So course outline or the, the front page of your syllabus, right. the objectives, and that's part of why I wanted to clarify what's an objective versus an outcome. Mm -hmm. right. So these are outcomes. This okay. is a, as a result of this entire day, course. This is what you're going to know. Yeah. And the topicals are we're going to do all of this so that right. you know this. So yes. those can stay. Yes. Outside. Well, and I would say I recommend doing them. I personally do it as well. Here's our mm -hmm. learning objectives is what, oh, instead yeah. of calling them topicals, that's what I call them in my class. Mm -hmm. But um, they're, they're the same thing. Those are as a result of today's interaction or this week's module. Here's the objectives where these are just as a result of this entire course, X, Y, Z, clearly denoted. So, yeah, and that's the goal and the purpose. It's not to reinvent everything. It's not to start from scratch. Just to clarify what we're currently doing in a way that we can use it for systematic routine and effective assessment. All right, there are supports available. So um, those of you that are fellows know that this is our job. Um, we are... We are trying to get this done by May 20th, 2022 is our goal. So um, there is a course level outcome for assessment worksheet. Even if you're not an assessment fellow, use it, right? Not, not just assessment fellows are going to be working on getting these created. Ideally, it's everybody within the department, all hands on deck, and then assessment fellows have their own role um, of entering into our watermark system. There's a training SLO worksheet courtesy of Lauren Cosrow. So she used it in previous training. It's just a way to self-check, right? What is a student learning outcome? Let's look at the definition. What are some questions we should be asking ourselves? And how, you know, how can we approach this in a way similar to everything I just went over? Action verb with the statement and really creating high quality um, course level outcomes. Program and course level outcome subcommittee. So we do have a subcommittee that's here to support everybody. Um, Jeff Hiller and John Cody run the committee, but they also have assessment fellows underneath them that are hopefully they said was a pretty decent cross section of campus. However, I'm always here too. So um, I, I'm more than happy to help. Like I said, I'm right in it with everybody else. I don't even know how many courses I have to create because I'm a one-man team. Um, so, right. of course, I'll outcomes for all of my programs. But, Christy, what do you think that the training uh, MLU worksheet? So that should have been attached with the email I sent out to everybody. If it wasn't, I will send it out. Plus, I'm going to probably give everything to Laura to send out, just my PDF and then a couple other things as well. So you have them. Um, assessment fellow shell, I'll put them in there as well. Okay. Is just professional develop or yeah, professional development tools okay. for you guys to use. So I don't want anybody to feel like they're alone. They don't have support. That they have no clue what's going on. We are here. We have resources available. So I have a question. Yes. The nursing department is in the midst of all of that. <laughs> yes. So most you're looking at our course level. Um, now because of our accreditation. Majority of our courses have seven course learning outcomes mm -hmm. overall. And yep. so then when we're looking at our modules, each one of our modules we have got so many different topics. Yep. So we need to map them out to see which one is matching which learning objective. You don't even need to do that yet. We'll get there eventually we, in time. We but, have, we have yeah. because our license is what yeah. I just want to make sure that No, you sound like you might have a majority of the work done. It's just getting it into watermark once we get to there. So I have not opened that to anybody yet to where they can enter into the system because I didn't want anybody playing around um, until we were ready to enter in. So right now is really just the development phase. I will release a training as to how to put those in there. It's literal copy and paste. That was the hope with my worksheet is you could get those there and then just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste, um, and make it easy. Um, but absolutely. I will say also on Monday nights, when I don't have another meeting or anything like that, I usually do offer availability in the H building if I can get a, the computer room. And I just kind of hang out in there 
from 4.30 until 6. And usually I have people come in or they'll email me and I say, hey, just let me see if I can get the room. We can go in there, work on watermark, whatever we need to do to get things done. So I'm, all, I'm always available. I'm always around, especially on Mondays. All right, questions? What was yeah. again the maximum of the uh, outcomes? So ideally one to six, seven being what we hope to be the max. Because you don't want to have too many. I'm sorry, one, one more time. One, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> one to six was our target. One to seven six. was kind of like okay. the max of what we wanted. Just because again, we want to be able to routinely right, right. do that. Reasonably. And, and would you say, so like if I was teaching that basic intro first semester right out of high school, I'm probably going to have Probably. But if I'm doing a end of the program mastering blah blah blah, I'm probably gonna have yeah, so gonna have, you're gonna have six or seven. Yeah, and that's right. where I'm kind of at as I'm getting to the higher level courses. I'm like, mm. like I I am struggling a little bit to like condense mm -hmm. um, and having to get strategic um, with the way that I do condense. It. Um, I think maybe that's a silly question, and I, I know it depends on the discipline and on the course, but are we aiming for within those seven to attack at least few of the Bloom's category? Yeah, so the goal would be two to three if possible. Right. You know, okay. even if to it's have some distribution. In an entry level, you'll probably have the lower two. Right, right, um, right. right. Um, yeah. Yes, define and explain. Yeah. But once you get to the higher level, you're going to get to more of right. it applying yeah. and. Um, creating. creating. Yep. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Assembling. Assembling. That is a good one. All right. So that's really all I had. For, I wasn't. I did have a potential activity which I can already tell I can't do. So um, which was I was going to have you guys pull up a piece of your curriculum and just kind of look at, at what you have for a class that you teach most frequently. Uh, but I know we won't have a time for that. Chrissy, I have a quick question. Sure. So I teach a required English mm -hmm. uh, rhetoric course. Yep. And so the objectives are really multifaceted research, you know, right. analytical skills, stuff like that. Would it be helpful on my assignments to put in course outcomes for that particular assignment? Like the students? So they know. Yeah, like not, of course, of, you know, like an assignment outcome. Like yeah. Like what I expect. From this assignment and go off of what's on my syllabus as yeah. course outcomes. Yeah, absolutely. So I would say for that, probably those topical outcomes mm -hmm. tying into okay. the assignment is a great idea okay. um, because that then you can figure out where it falls in the course level outcomes okay. very easily. And maybe even use those as I usually have them do a self assessment of mm -hmm. how they felt. Maybe incorporate that in the self assessment as well. Yes. Yep. And that's the biggest thing, you know, when it comes to outcomes is really making sure that we're all clear, we're all on the same page of what what are we expecting um, as instructors, as students, um, as a result of, of that interaction. So, and it, curriculum and assessment should guide all of our classroom activities. So, um, in theory, you know, and that's, that's what we, we're trying to work towards and, and strive towards as we build assessments. So, a little bit deeper in college. All right, if you have questions, do not hesitate to reach out to me. I'm pretty good about getting back in a reasonable time. Um, so I put my email on here as well. Um, but again, it, uh, for those of you that have done curriculum, it, it's more of a, you know, just review and maybe seeing a different word that you think you can use and, and um, tweak the things that we do have. And those that haven't done curriculum before, that's okay. I do recommend work with faculty within the department. That, that's the whole goal. We really should be working together as, as a collaborative team when we create these things. So we're all on the same page and the, we're teaching similar things within the same type of course. Yeah. So if I want the curriculum form to the course objectives, yes. where it has the sentences, we're not changing them to say CLO one, CLO, and then running them through curriculum. No. Or are, okay, thank you. That's no, you what are I'm not We're that. just going to look at that and then come up with a CLO one, two, and then put them through watermark. Yes, we're going to put them into watermark, and ideally, we are killing two birds with one stone because curriculum is going to watermark. Okay, and so, so here's the other. So if let's say that, like yours, for example, 
you're not sending your, even though you took all of those words and brought them down to four and got rid of a lot of those words, you're not rewriting that sentence. Okay. Nope. Leaving it as is for now. I got it. Yep. And then again, I'm, I'm anticipating some things once watermark goes for curriculum, mm -hmm. but we're preparing for those. So we'll be ready to just smoothly take care of it um, when that transition does occur. So. Just don't clarify. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? I so if I have the 16, I pick one of those and it becomes one of the CLO, CLOs mm -hmm. and I do not rewrite this. Mm -hmm. 16 what? If I said have, you know, mm -hmm. on my course outline, right? You're I have looking at objectives. Not objectives or what, right? I take one objective and word by word it becomes the CLO. No. 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 Right? Uh, okay. no. no, no, no. Like, okay, so can you go back? Yeah. There's Tell me why I, I hope have... this is helping everyone. <laughs> oh, see. All right. Sorry. Okay, go back. Keep going. So that's, see that over the learning outcome? I wish this thing worked. This mm -hmm. oh, see, oh, see the learning outcome? That's what we're well, on the CLO right. side. Not the learning not objectives. Yeah, okay. not the list that we have. Okay. That we put it, we're going to take that and yeah. we're going to come up with the CLO. Okay. Now not we're, the learning. We're doing the learning. I might have said objectives. We're taking that with the learning outcome. Learning objectives stay by themselves. Topicals stay by themselves. Yeah. We're going to come up with CLOs out of that. Sentence. Okay, now yeah. I got it. Thank you. Yes. And you can just use those other outcomes and, and objectives to drive your decision making yes. process and really um, help facilitate that. But so when we're talking about assessing, you're assessing the effectiveness of the learning, the overall learning of outcomes. Well, Inside of what? So this we are not yet. So this, I'm saying yeah. that's where we're going. We're going to assess these. Okay. Yep. Okay. One right. by one or two by okay. two in All a right. three-year cycle. So Ooh. you can see if for those that were a part of program learning outcome development, this is where we're going, right? HLC wants to see us doing a better job at course level outcome evaluation. The nice thing is these tie to programs. Yes. This so is what I was say, yeah. It's really not more work in the big scheme of things because we're gonna map everything organically and right. watermark which is nice because it does it for us. Mm -hmm. um, and then we're going to be evaluating course levels at the same time as program levels and not even have to figure out which ones because they're already getting up their natural connection. Okay. Yeah, um, so hopefully the goal of course is to make it easier. And Watermark is a little bit hard to work in the beginning and a little bit of front effort, but it does become very, very routine and easier the more that you use it. Don't you want to take the form physics calculations and conversions and describe how physical principles are used in various, don't you want to make that into one sentence so you're, like, while they do that project, those calculations, they're showing you those physical principles. I got, like, in my mind, I'm, like, shortening it up for your, I don't know I what don't you do make to it represent it. <laughs> yeah, of how you represent that as your assessment. Well, and this, I'm going to tell you, this only took me maybe 30 minutes. Yeah, but when you assess but, yeah. it, though, then now you've yeah. got all the back end work. Yeah, that is true. That is true. Because you have to come up with a way to make sure it's happening. Yep. Sure that you're yeah. Doing those things. Well, and so here's the nice thing. For example, I'm going to say perform physics calculations and conversions. I'm going to go back here. Um, it happens in in number three, right? That yeah. actually um, happens more than there, which is something I'm changing because yeah. there's more calculations. There's calculations in column one, column mm -hmm. three, and some even in column four. Yeah. So I'm like, I can assess it at any of those levels. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. yeah. No, and that's what I was just saying to Justina is it's it will be you you can really look and see how your course is. Right. Really like I see how it. it's doing. It's how, and this is all, all of this is part of backwards design too and course development. Like mm -hmm. quality course development is so rooted in our outcomes and really connecting with the curriculum. Um, so when I, I say this, how do we connect to curriculum? Connect, and they're like, okay, Christy, you're crazy. Um, but you're right. it's so true. Is it, what are we supposed to be teaching? Because sometimes I, I'm guilty. 
I teach what I like to teach sometimes. I always make sure these are taught, but there's always something I like to teach that so it's fun or it, you know, it, it gets students involved a little bit more. And there is a benefit to that. There's nothing saying you can't do that. Right. But you really have to make sure you hit all these and include that as well as an additional. Okay. So yeah, this is this is really just a guide to help um, and make it clear. All right, everybody. That's all I got for you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for joining. I don't know if I had any questions in the chat. Whenever I get home tomorrow for 48 hours straight, that's where I sit in the dark. I don't think I see any questions. No questions. All right. We can stop.